Hey guys, George from Soundtracks here. Last week we showed you all the different types of consisting and how they work behind the scenes. This week we're going to show you how to set up your advanced consist. So in setting up an advanced consist, we're going to look at setting a couple of CVs on the locomotive's decoder themselves and the decoder will then interpret how to respond. Now, a quick refresher how this works. You set up the consist and you get an alias. An alias is a number between 1 and 127 as your consist address. When you select that address in the command station, the command station sends the command out. The decoder says, hey, I'm part of that consist and behaves as you've told it to by setting these couple of CVs. The best part about this method is you don't lose the individual parameters that you've set for each of the locomotives, i.e. the volume levels. So let's take a look at how to set this up. Now when we are doing this, we have to look at our locomotives and we have to determine what functions we want active on each of the locomotives based on its position in our consist. So first we're going to take a look here at the lead locomotive. Now looking at our function list, we're going to go through and the lead locomotive we want the F0 headlight. We also want the F1 for the bell, the F2 for the horn, and the F3 for the short horn. Now because this is a consist, we also want to use the F4 for the dynamic brakes, the F5 and the F6 for RPM plus and minus so we can override the DDE if we really want to. Uh, F7 will dim our headlight so when we're meeting oncoming traffic we can dim our headlight. F8 is the mute so we do want that active. F9 is the grade crossing horn, and again, we want our horn on our lead unit, so we're going to enable that as well. F10 is a straight to 8, so we want to grab a little bit extra power just with the push of a single button as we're pulling that train out of the yard, so we'll go ahead and enable F10 as well. F11 is our brake application, as we've talked about in past videos, and F12 toggles between the independent and the automatic, so we do want all of those enabled on our lead locomotive. Now, going into the higher functions, a lot of those have to do with servicing the locomotive and things like that, so we're going to go ahead and just limit those to be active on, on the lead locomotive when it's in a consist. So, with that, the higher functions, we're going to go with F14 for switching mode, and then we're going to enable F21 for the sander valve. Now, this one has a, the Mars light on it, so we're also going to enable the function 24 for the FX3 lighting effect. Now our trailing locomotive, we're going to look at this and see what needs to be active. So our second unit here, no headlight, no bell, no horn, no short horn. First one we're going to enable is the F4 dynamic brake. Then we're going to enable the F5 and the F6 so that we can manually override the notching together with all of the units combined. The F7 dim we don't need to enable because there's no lights on the second unit, but the F8 we want to go ahead and enable. The F9 we don't need to enable because it's an air horn. The F10 straight to 8, yes, we do want to enable that. The F11 brake application and the F12 brake selection we do want to enable. The F14 switching mode and the F21 sander valve. But again, there's no lights on this one, so we'll stop there. Now when we look at our last unit, our trailing unit, you're going to see all of the same ones that are set up on this unit, except this one we may want to enable the headlight in reverse. So let's take a quick look at the CVs and how to do this. So the first thing we want to do is in CV19, CV19 selects the consist address. Now as I mentioned this is an alias, a number between 1 and 127 to determine the train number or the consist ID number. Now to help you out this can be the lead locomotive's first two digits, the second two digits, anything you want it to be a number between 1 and 127. So for ease of everything setting up here, we're going to go ahead and select address 20. That's address 20. So on our lead locomotive facing forward, we want to set CV19 to a value of 20. Our second unit facing forward, again, CV19 is going to be set to a value of 20 because that's our consist address. Now our third locomotive facing rearward, we want to pay special attention to this. Our consist address is going to be the same but we're going to add 128 to that value to tell the decoder that you're part of consist 20, but you're facing the other direction. And so when you get a forward command, you're actually going to move in reverse. So to do that, we're going to take CB19 on this trailing unit, and we're going to set it to a value of 148. 
that's 20, our consist address, plus 128 to tell the decoder that it's facing rearward. Now, once we've done that, we go into our consist function mapping. And these are set in CVs 21, 22, 245, 246, and 247. CV 21 enables functions 1 through 8. CVs 22 enables functions 0 forward, 0 reverse, 9, 10, 11, and 12. With Soundtracks products, CV 245 enables functions 13 through 20, and then CV 246 enables functions 21 through 28. Now, CV 247 enables auto features such as the emergency stop, so we're going to go ahead and enable that on our locomotives as well. The list shown here is for the aftermarket Tsunami 2 function defaults. As long as you have not moved any functions around, use these values, you can have this consist up and running relatively quickly. So now that we've got this set up, we're going to go ahead and just simply select address 20 on our throttle. I'm going to send my commands, including my headlight and my horn, and you're going to hear only the horn on the lead locomotive. I'm going to start to run my locom group of locomotives together. You're going to hear them all run. And when I set my brakes, you see the brakes set, you see the brakes release together. Change direction. You can see how the locomotives are all working together as one unit. Now the best part about advanced consisting is when I'm releasing a locomotive is all I have to do is set CV19 to a value of zero and the decoder no longer cares what's in any of those other CV values because they don't reference it. On this consist now I'm going to release locomotive 5615. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to select 5615, I'm going to select CV19 to a value of zero, I'm going to uncouple. And I'm going to pull away. And 5615 is no longer part of my train. So with this quick look into advanced consisting, there's more information in our user's guide at soundtracks.com under the manuals tab. Plus, you won't break the decoder by changing CV, so I encourage you to give this a try. If you have the wrong value, you get something different, set it to zero and start back over again and try it out. We hope this has been informative and helpful for you. And if you have any questions, we're a phone call or an email away at support at soundtracks.com.